you're all just little monsters, aren't you? It's okay. I have a realistic view on life. I know that you're only here to see me suffer. And yet, somehow, I participate in it every month. So who's really in the wrong here? Hi guys, it's Leanne and welcome back to my February TBR month two of my hashtag year of readathons. And you know, my ongoing forever stack it project. I thought that I was going to be giving myself a little bit of an easy month in February, but alas, this has not come to pass. But before we get into the torture method that you guys have picked for this month's TBR, I would like to quickly talk a little bit about today's sponsors, Ana Luisa. If you are a booktube aficionado then you have probably heard about Ana Luisa before and if you're anything like me that means that you're super excited about them. So excited that I gave myself a temporary glow up. <laughs> if there's one thing that makes me feel like a finished whole human being it's adding a little bit of jewellery to my outfit. It just makes me feel so much more confident, so much more put together and I have never found a more easy to accessorise jewellery brand than Ana Luisa. Also because you guys know that I am an environment geek, I love my plants, I love my planet and luckily so does Ana Luisa. Throughout the entire process of making Ana Luisa jewellery from sourcing the materials to the manufacturing, Ana Luisa are carbon neutral. So effectively every bit of beautiful sparkle that they produce is carbon invisible. It makes us look better but the planet doesn't notice that it exists. Which is how I like all of my consumable products. This is their beautiful Nessie pendant. So if you like Scotland, this is definitely an appropriately named piece. And I pair it almost always with this stunning rope band. This ring is just so comfortable and even when I don't have my nails done, it makes my hands feel pretty. So if you would also like the effortlessness of Ana Luisa style in your life, they currently have a Valentine's Day sale on just in time to treat yourself. So they are offering a buy one, get one 40% off, which is absolutely insane. Their pieces are already so affordable that I think I'm going to end up decked out from head to toe in them, let's be honest. And you can be too by following the link down in my description. Hydration was required for courage for the rest of this video. There are quite a few of you guys who are new here, so welcome. If you would like a recap for the rules of either Stack It or my hashtag Year of TBRs, then you can check out my January video wherein I went through all of the nitty gritty. So this month I came up with the bright idea of asking you guys what is a very standard question for a bookish person. And my question simply was, what is your favourite bookish trope? Oh, and I ask for almost all of my weird prompts for my year of readathons over on Instagram. So if you would like to also contribute to said weird prompts in the future, you can find me here. And so when I asked this, I thought to myself, how would I answer this? And I could only think of two things, returning to a small town and found family. Those are two of my absolute favourite tropes. I talk about them all the time. They were the things that were in the top of my head. And I, I said to people, I said, put in as many of your favourite tropes as possible, thinking that they, like me, would only have one or two. <laughs> I was wrong. Because we did not have one or two tropes from one or two people. We in fact had hundreds of tropes from hundreds of you. Thank you deeply for your undying support. I really, really appreciate it. But wow, there was a lot of you this month. I think I enjoyed it, but it was a lot. And so I spent a long time fishing through all of your replies, weeding out the duplicates and making a list of all of the tropes and Wowzers. First of all, y'all weird. You weird. And second of all, there are some tropes out there that I, I didn't even know existed. And so what I elected to do was put all of said tropes on this wheel. This is now my trope TBR 
wheel thing. And so just before we go through the list of what's on here, I did take out the things that I knew for absolute certainty I did not have on my shelves. I also took out every like slight variation of a trope and just condensed it down to something that would be accessible to most of my genres. So that leaves us with the following. Found family, fake dating, sisters, enemies to lovers, only one bed, you guys are kinky, brooding slash sunny main character, so uh, a team of like a brooding grumpy main character with a sunny happy main character to bounce off, the start of a villain arc, <laughs> I love this one, learning new skills, morality chain, I didn't know what this was, I had to google this, morality chains are when one person being good relies on another person's influence, I really love that, underdogs, restarting life, small town returns, speaking to my heart, the chosen one, old and younger main characters having to work together, I have powers? Shock! Mentor or a student specifically in fantasy, so that's why we have the F here, animal companion, anti-hero, unreliable narrator, supportive teacher. My computer is going insane because I am screen recording this and recording a video at the same time. Murder in space, love triangle, because I love you! Portal fantasy, inanimate objects, fairy tale retelling, a lady investigator, destined to die, not a favourite but I do own it. Is it a ghost? Definitely a favourite. Haunted house, isolated locale, time travel, revenge, unlikely allies, artificial intelligence and magic schools. So we've got a little bit there to be going on with and the fun thing about this wheel is that I can actually save it and share it with you guys. So in the description of this video there is actually a link to the wheel where you can save it and then you can make a copy of it if you want so you can get rid of some tropes that don't apply to your TBRs and put in some new ones that you like better and then you can play along either in February or for future months TBRs. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. Fortunately this is water and not alcohol and I don't even drink that much alcohol. Found family! Oh my god! Yes, give us all of the applause for found family. Okay, that was the best first spin we could possibly have had and I really shouldn't get salty at anything that happens after this point because found family is where I live. I'm now having a little bit of internal debate because the first thing that I thought of when I thought of found family was catching up with the wayward children series. However, there is also portal fantasy on this spinner and I'll be really really annoyed if I get portal fantasy and then I can't choose this for it. So do I hedge my bets and find some more found family on my shelves? That is the question. And I don't really have an answer to the question to be perfectly honest so I'll be right back. Okay ladles, gentle spoons and other kitchen implements, we have a winner. But I'm bending the rules of Stack It just a little bit. So you guys know that in combination with Year of TBR I play Stack It which is where I take unread physical books off of my shelves, put them in a stack and then I have to read them in the order that they came out in. And usually I would only put unread TBR books in my stacks because that's the whole purpose of Stack It. If I get to it and I don't want to read it I have to unhaul it. However, this book is book one of a trilogy that I never actually read the third book of. I absolutely freaking adore books one and two. I, mm, I love them so much. They are a classic but I never ever got myself to read the third book because I was always terrified of how it was going to end. So I'm going to let myself put this one on my Stack It TBR on the principle that I'll never get to the third unread one if I don't actually actually allocate space in my TBR to reread books one and two. It's a tiny bit of a cheat, I admit it, but we're going to go with it. And that book is of course The Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Anybody who's been around my channel will know the story of me not 
finishing this series. This one also so counts for found family in so many weird and unconventional ways. It is about Caro. She is a teenage student who is living in beautiful Prague and she has all of the complications in her life that a teenage student just trying to live has except that Caro has an added complication in her life being that she is the messenger for a monstrous demon type creature in a world called the Elsewhere which has one foot in our world and one foot not in our world. Caro was raised half in our world and half in Elsewhere and she doesn't really know how this came to pass or where she really came from but then one day the doors to Elsewhere start to close and she has to choose human life or her adopted family and I think it's safe to say that she will do pretty much anything to get back to the place that she chooses to be. But I do think that if I'm slightly bending the rules of Stack It and adding this one this month, I should make the caveat that I have to read book two in March. I had to work out what month that was. <laughs> My birthday month, but I still apparently don't know that it comes after February. And then the final one in April in order to, you know, balance my stack it books slightly. Keep my stack it karma neutral. I would be lying if I didn't honestly tell you that there are a few in here that I am hoping come up and a few that I'm hoping don't. Oh, okay. Fairy tale retelling. Yay. Woo. Okay, I'm going to admit while my brain logically knows that it is equally possible for any of these tropes to come up on spin the wheel, like they all have an equal chance, I didn't think that I was going to get ones that I liked. I genuinely and honestly thought that this was going to be awful and I was going to have to rip my shelves apart to find things. So I immediately know exactly which book I am picking for fairy tale retelling. Let me go get it. This is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I hauled these absolutely stunning fairy loot editions a couple of months ago and I was planning on reading them during the winter period when obviously it would have been the perfect time to read them because they are set in a snowy quasi Russia. But I just didn't get around to them. December was absolutely insane and I regretted it so much. Like I was salty for all of Christmas because I hadn't picked this one up and that meant that I wasn't going to be able to finish the trilogy in the winter time. And that's still true. It's in bulk today. We're halfway to spring. I'm not going to read all three of these books by the time that spring comes but I'm going to start it anyway. So this trilogy is based on Russian folk tales and I'm just going to read you the blurb because it's, it's very moody. It's very atmospheric. Vibes are being caught here. In a village at the edge of the wilderness of northern Russia, winter lasts most of the year and snowdrifts grow taller than houses. Here an elderly servant tells stories of sorcery, folklore and the winter king to the children of the family. Tales of old magic frowned upon by the church. But for the young wild Vasya these are more than just stories. She alone can see the house spirits that guard her home and sense the growing forces of dark magic in the woods. And on the back of each of these fairy loot editions there is an iconic little line from the book and this one says Fairy tales are sweet on winter nights, nothing more. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Animal Companion. Okay. Okay. I will admit that was one of the ones that I was hoping would not come up. I don't have a lot on my shelves that would constitute Animal Companion and I think the stuff that I do is basically the last trilogy in the Realm of the Elderling series by Robin Hall. I haven't read the last Fitz trilogy and I think it's fair to say that all of the books in this world more or less have animal companions of some sorts in them but I don't want to just jump onto this trilogy because I am planning on rereading everything from Ship of Magic onwards this year and finishing it off so I could I could bend my stack at rules again and add Ship of Magic to this TBR or I could try and find something else with an animal companion let me go and raid my shelves Okay guys, I have a dilemma. I couldn't find anything else anywhere in my library that had a genuine straight up animal companion. Everything would really have been pushing the envelope. So 
I have a choice. As the only legitimate things that I have left in my library with animal companions in them are rereads, I'm going to put another reread on my stack it. I did want to allow myself to reread more this year, but I was thinking like in addition to reading the unread books that I own, but this TBR is not lending itself to doing that. As my first two books are an urban fantasy and then a straight up fairy tale retelling, so all very fantastical, I'm going to give myself a choice. If I read those first two books and I'm still feeling like fantasy, I will read Ship of Magic and I will kick off my Robin Hobb reread. Although Ship of Magic doesn't have any straight up animal companions, I need to reread this trilogy in order to get onto the books that do. So either I will allow myself to read more fantasy and carry on with this mammoth commitment, or I will read Dumb Witness, which I think is the 15th or 16th book in the Hercule Poirot novels by Agatha Christie. Now I have also read this one. There are very few Poirot novels that I have not read, but I haven't read this one since I was a teenager. And I do have an ongoing Agatha Christie project, which I don't really talk about or update you guys on very often because it's literally just me rereading all of the Poirot and Marple books in order. So there's not much to update on other than like, yay, I read another one. So this one would be out of order for me, but it does definitely have an animal companion. So this one is about a woman who has a fall on the stairs and she is initially just convinced that she slipped on a rubber tennis ball that was left by her dog and that's you know as deep as it goes. But the more she thinks about it the more she's like mm, actually no I kind of think my relatives are trying to kill me which is when she engages Poirot. Problem is she sends the letter to Poirot in the April and Poirot doesn't get it until the October when she is already long dead and there is of course only one witness to all of this which is her doggy. And like every other Poirot book in the world I am looking forward a lot to rereading this because reading some of these books as an adult is a whole trip let me tell you. So there you go you guys will find out in my wrap up whether I read this one or whether I read Ship of Magic. And if you're feeling slightly saucy, you can let me know in the comments below which one you think it's more likely that I'm going to get to. Oh, we got supportive teacher. That was so, so nearly an unreliable main character. Boohoo me. Okay, so again, I pretty much know exactly which book I'm going to pick for this one. This is Across the Green Grass Fields by Seanan Maguire and it is the however many number this is into the series of the Wayward Children books. I was going to keep it just in case Portal Fantasy came up. I almost used it for Found Family. But as it is doubtful that either of those two are going to come up for a last spin, just statistically speaking, I think I'm going to put it in here. Apparently this series is just on my mind this month and also apparently I'm just making my brain happy with this stack. It's probably completely redundant to tell you anything about this series. I have talked about it a lot before and it is a booktube favourite so you've probably heard everything that there is to hear about it but just in case you haven't I'll give you a little recap. Eleanor West's home and school for wayward children is there for a very specific kind of child. Kind of child that very early on in their life found a door. A door which turned up completely randomly in front of them and through which they decided to walk with no knowledge of what was on the other side. And each of these children found themselves in their perfect fantasy world. A fantasy world which is tailored specifically for them. One that feels good for their brain and is tailored for their body and their gender and their sexuality. But every single one of these children has at some point walked through another door and been kicked out of their fairylands. Eleanor West collects up these wayward children, these battered and bruised and sad children that have been rejected by the one thing that they really loved and she tries to piece them back together. And along the way there are, you know, things which are expressly forbidden that happen anyway, like murders and quests. And of course some children who are absolutely desperate to find their doors again and will stop at nothing to do so. And because these are so teeny teeny tiny, depending on what I do with Ship of Magic, I 
may end up rereading the whole series which is what happens every time I let myself catch up with it again. I am awful. I am absolutely awful. Usually my TBRs are literally like ripping fingernails off. I'm like oh okay I'll read that book. That book that I bought and wanted to read but was on my shelf and I didn't pick. You guys picked. I'll read the book. And this month is more like la 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 la. There will be consequences. I can I can feel them. It might even karmically be this last spin. Let's find out. It's a haunted house, guys! Did you see it said haunted house? It's a haunted house, guys! This is legitimately the most kind TBR I have ever had. What has happened? Are you all sitting feeling cheated right now because I'm not super stressed? Has this been as much fun just watching me be happy about the picks as being like, <gasps> are you missing my pain? Well, you might be, but I'm still picking a haunted house book, BRB. Do people still say BRB anymore? That kittens did not take me very long because I gravitated straight to nothing but blackened teeth. Again, this one is super short and so it will play nicely into this TBR because if I do read Ship of Magic and if I do end up rereading the entire Wayward Children series, I'm probably not going to want another huge chunky book. Also, this cover is horrifying and I don't even really want to hold it up anymore. It's just gross. I do not like it. Let's just get rid of the cover, shall we? We'll just put it down here and I shall read you the blurb. So this one says, Kat joins her old friends who are in search of the perfect wedding venue to spend the night in a Heian era manor in Japan. Trapped in a web of love, responsibility and yesterdays, they walk into a haunted house with their hearts full of ghosts. This mansion is long abandoned and it is hungry for new guests and welcomes them all, welcomes the demons inside them because it is built on foundations of sacrifice and bone. Their night of food, drinks and games quickly spirals into a nightmare as the house draws them into its embrace, for lurking in the shadows is the ghost bride with a black smile and a hungry heart, and she gets lonely down there in the dark. I'm so excited. So there we go, that was my Stack It TBR for the month, which is either gonna be perfectly manageable or insane. But as usual, there are a few other things that I have to get to in February. First of all, I have still got Jade City to read. I didn't get to it in January. This is my Patreon book club pick for the months of January and February. So I have to read this one this month. Yet more fantasy. I'm really, I'm not sad about it. I'm quite happy about the amount of fantasy that's ended up being on this list. And in January, I started a new project, which is my Patreon Picks Pot. Could have picked a better name for the pot, but I didn't. Here I find myself trying to pronounce that forever and ever and always. <laughs> Essentially, if you are a patron of mine, you can throw in as many books as you want to the Patreon Picks Pot. And every month I will randomly generate a result and read one of those books. However, I did not get to my January Patreon pick which was this one the title of which is still escapes me I don't know why but it will not solidify itself in my brain it's a book by Nancy Tucker who I love dearly and what I'm gonna do is if I manage to read it with time left in the month I will generate another pick and I will read that one and the only other thing that I would like to get to this month is Blue Monday by Nikki French I read House of Corrections by Nikki French in January and I really enjoyed it I had some problems with it and I'll tell you all about that in my tops and bottoms wrap up but I really really enjoyed it and I did go on and pick up a few of their other standalone picks which you will see in a haul later on in February but I have been really really craving a mystery or detective series on audiobook and so I decided to pick up the Frida Klein series which starts with Blue Monday. Now I am very very out of the crime genre now, I really don't read books about single detectives very often anymore and so I will admit I am a bit leery of starting this one even though it is a mystery series and not strictly like a detective series but having read House of Corrections I feel like I want to give this one a go. Now there was another couple of things that I was going to pop onto this list like Moonlight and the Pearl daughter or arrives under the sea or even to paradise which I didn't end up picking up in January but I think looking at the state of this TBR that we should probably just not 
bother, I should probably not put anything else on this list. So I'm being nice adjacent to myself guys and I'm gonna say we're done for February books now. I hope that you have enjoyed watching me spin the trope wheel and I hope that all of my screen recordings worked okay because it's the first time that I've done that and technology doesn't always favour us. If you have enjoyed it remember there is a link down below to the trope wheel so you can do this yourself and also remember that there is a link down below to Anna Louisa who are doing a Valentine's sale buy one get one 40% off if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up because it really does help me reach other bookworms who can watch me being tortured and if you're new here please consider hitting the subscribe button I do this to myself every month for your pleasure. And as always, if you have read any of the books that I have talked about today, please let me know about them down below. Did you like them? Did you hate them? Do you have other recommendations based on them that you think I would like? Tell me all about that down below. And I will speak to you soon, guys.